Let me share with you everything you need to know about vitamin K. You will learn about the benefits of vitamin K, about the signs you might be deficient in vitamin K, about how to get it, where to get it from, and much, much more. So stick around. By the way, my name is Albert. If you're new here and you want to optimize your diet to burn fat, live long, and feel awesome, start now by subscribing. Vitamin K causes blood clotting, and that may sound bad, but it's necessary because... Otherwise, we would bleed out at any time something would happen to us. Vitamin K also helps us utilize calcium. It helps calcium uh, to get into the right places and it prevents it from getting to wrong places where it would actually cause calcification and kidney stones and other bad problems. Vitamin K boosts testosterone. It may boost your thyroid health as well. It creates insulin, it keeps you insulin sensitive, thus prevents diabetes. It protects you from cancer, it increases your exercise performance because you can take up more energy and utilize it right as you exercise. And if you are deficient in vitamin K, you will probably experience excess bleeding, weak bones, joint pain, and then bruises. They are formed when you bleed under your skin. So. Without vitamin K2, they wouldn't really be formed. Other signs of deficiency include skin issues, infertility, and of course, kidney stones. Now, there are different types of vitamin K, and this is crucial. Now, there are two types. There's K1, there is K2, and K1 is from plants. K2 is from animals or fermented foods. Vitamin K2 further divides into MKs from uh, MK4 to MK13. And the most important ones are MK4 and MK7. So we want to look at three forms. There is K1, K2, MK4 and K2, MK7. From these three, MK4 is the most important one and that's why MK1 and MK7 sometimes convert into MK4. Almost all the K1 converts into MK4, but the conversion rate is very low for most people. The conversion of MK7 to MK4 is way easier, but MK7 is also somewhat important on itself. MK7 is, for example, uh, more effective at reaching our bones, so it is better and more important for our bone health than MK4. So preferably we want to get all the three forms of vitamin K. We don't really need vitamin K1. We can definitely get away without having any in our body. But it still supports like blood clotting. And if we didn't get K1, we, we would have to utilize MK7 or MK4 for those functions instead of k1 the rda for vitamin k is set at 120 micrograms per average male and and 90 micrograms per average woman but this rda was established way before any significant research was done on vitamin k2 so it's pretty much a useless number for you research shows that we need at least 100 micrograms of K2 a day and preferably 200 micrograms of K2 a day. And some people need even more. For example, patients with kidney disease need even more than 400 micrograms a day. What are the best sources of vitamin K? To get your K1 in, just consume a few leafy greens. That's it. You don't really need to worry about it too much. And unless you are a carnivore, I believe that you are getting enough vitamin K1 from your diet. If you are a carnivore, again, it doesn't matter because you don't really need vitamin K1. MK4 we get either from grass-fed or pasture-raised animal foods. These animals do have to be fed grass because from grass they get the K1, which they convert to MK4. And they are very good at it, unlike us. If you eat 6 ounces of goose or duck liver, you don't have to worry about K2 and K4 for a week. Beef liver is another huge source with around 300 micrograms per 100 grams. And other types of liver contain around 40 micrograms per 100 grams. But again, it has to be grass-fed. If it's not grass-fed, it might not contain any K1. 
MK2 at all. Pasteurized eggs are also very significant source of MK4 with around 40 micrograms per one. And if I ever said milligrams instead of micrograms, I meant micrograms. When it comes to MK7, the number one, the by far the number one, source is natto which is a type of fermented soy found in japan even if you eat the tiniest amount of natto we're talking like 20 to 30 grams you should be good to go with mk7 for a week grass-fed cheese is another good source of mk7 where 100 grams of cheese typically contains around 200 micrograms of mk7 if you want to absorb vitamin k properly you need to consume it along with dietary fat and if you are on a low fat diet you might be deficient and you might need more vitamin k and to recycle vitamin k we need vitamins b1 b2 and vitamin b3 when it comes to cooking unfortunately around 40 percent of K1 and MK7 get destroyed by heat. MK4 is more heat stable, but it also gets reduced by heat, typically around 10 to 20%, and it depends on how long you cook it for. Now, pan frying might not be the best option when it comes to uh, the preservation of vitamin K, because vitamin K is fat soluble, so it dissolves into the fat. So if you go for pan frying or uh, deep frying or whatever just consume the fat as well because the k2 will be in the fat as well and if you do consume the fat that you cook on then this becomes a non-issue and i believe that pan frying is overall much better and much healthier for you than let's say boiling or steaming maybe now chances are that even with all this knowledge you still might not get enough uh, vitamin k2 from the diet in this case this is where supplements come in and there are four main types of vitamin k supplements one is k1 which we don't want then there's m oil m oil is very high in mk4 and it is great i would recommend that but it's very very expensive the third form is k2 mk4 and the form is synthetic, but it's still very easy to absorb. Compared to M oil, there is no real downside to supplementing with K2, MK4, and it's much cheaper. But in most supplements, you will find K2, MK7. Although MK7 might not be as important as MK4 is, I would still take MK7 supplements. And it's not that there's anything wrong with MK4, it's just that mk7 can convert to mk4 whereas mk4 cannot convert to mk7 so when it comes to supplements i think that mk7 is superior to mk4 in order to properly absorb k2 from supplements you want to take it with vitamin a in form of retinol and vitamin d in form of d3 you can find a link to a very high quality ADK supplement in the description. You want to consume it with dietary fat and preferably in the morning, although there's not a big difference there. You only need to replenish your vitamin K2 status two times a week. Although supplementing with vitamin K2 is shown to be completely safe, doses more than 1000 micrograms a day would probably deplete you of vitamin E. Uh, D3 and vitamin A. So to make it simple, I would take the supplement that I recommended around three to five times a week. If you have any further questions about vitamin K, leave it down in the comments and I will answer it very fast. You can access the whole Nutrients 101 series for free. Just click somewhere here on the screen. And if you are looking for a specific nutrient, Check out the description under this video. If you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe and I will see you next time.